<laughs> All right, well, thanks a lot for having me here at uh, Gunn High School today. I uh, also want to thank my friend Warren Collier. I think he's one of your teachers here who convinced me to come. Thanks so much. <laughs> if any of the students want stories, they can ask me afterwards. I probably shouldn't tell them in public. But uh, we went to high school together right nearby here. Um, so yeah, I've spoken at a few of these things. I'm really impressed by the students who set this up. We, they were very thorough, actually. We went back and forth a bunch of times. And if my original presentation wasn't acceptable, so we're, we're working on it. Hopefully, this one will be good. <laughs> but uh, you know, usually, when you do these things, you don't give too much of your background. Because if you've been pretty successful, uh, adults don't like to hear about it. But I thought it'd be good just to start a little bit with the background for context for the kids, because it's not really competitive with you guys. So you can just, just hear a little bit about that and then explain what's going on. So I, I went to school, very similar high school to you guys in, in Fremont, and went to Stanford. And I got pretty lucky to get involved in a group of people around something called PayPal. And PayPal uh, w was pretty successful. It was a big payment system. We sold it to eBay. And a lot of my friends from PayPal, they went on to build a lot of the big companies in Silicon Valley right now. So they, a lot of the people I was with there, they left and they started things like Yelp, and LinkedIn, and YouTube, and Tesla, and lots of other companies you guys know. And I ended up starting a company called uh, Palantir. And I guess Palantir, uh, now that Twitter just IPO'd, Palantir is the biggest uh, private company in Silicon Valley that's, that's still private. And we worked on a lot of things in global defense and intelligence. So the, 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 background, the background with Palantir is that when we were at PayPal, uh, the bad guys were stealing all of our money. The Chinese and the Russians were kind of, yeah, it's kind of silly, but this is what happens in the real world. The Chinese and Russians were going after us, and they put all of our competitors out of business. And this was around 2000, 2001. And we worked with the government, and we figured out how to build our systems to stop the bad guys. And it turns out that uh, the government wasn't very good at dealing with data. And then 9-11 happened, and we said, wow, we should, probably should help them. And so we, we ended up starting Palantir to kind of help the government with its information systems and to protect civil liberties. And, we, and now Palantir works in about 20 countries on intelligence and defense. And it does a lot of things in little other areas as well. Um, and so it, it, Palantir kind of ties into something that's going on in the world that I think is really exciting right now, which is that there's actually a really big gap between how most business in the world works and how it could be working. And so this is, this is actually a very unique time in history, especially for you guys growing up in Silicon Valley. To, to, to step back a little bit in Silicon Valley, just the really brief history, how we see it, there's been about five waves of companies here in Silicon Valley over the last 100 years. So you guys know, of course, like the radio and the TV were invented here, and you had all the electronic tools companies, and Hewlett Packard was the first kind of really big electronic tools company, and that was a big wave for a while, and that attracted a lot of people here for electronics. And then you had, after that, the transistor was invented, and so you had the whole wave of semiconductor companies. So I think a lot of our parents, my, my dad was one of them, worked in the semiconductor industry. That was kind of the big industry here for a long time. And then thanks to semiconductors, all of a sudden you had all these businesses that were able to use computers, but they needed software to use their computers. And so the third wave in Silicon Valley was what we call enterprise software. And you had all these companies building things for businesses. And that, that was kind of the trend for a while, and that's where most of the value was created. Um, and then you had more personal computers coming and stuff, but it wasn't really until you had the internet that the consumer wave really took off. And so the fourth wave of companies were all around enabling the internet, right? It was called the telecom boom. Telecom boom was kind of like the 90s, like early 2000s. Back, I guess most of you guys were probably just getting born when that was started. And, uh, and, 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 so that, and that was a big wave of companies here. And then, of course, that kicked off the web 1.0 and web 2.0 booms. And so the kind of the, the, the next, the fifth wave of companies was what we call the consumer wave. And that, that's kind of been what you guys have known your whole life in terms of this is what technology is. It's a consumer wave. It's Web 2.0. It's mobile. It's all that stuff, right? And, and, and we can talk ad nauseum about that wave. And that's, that's a still a really important wave. Um, but a lot of us believe that a lot of the value has already been captured by the current platforms that exist in that wave. And we think there's a, there's a new wave of companies. And so what's happening now is there's something a lot of people call big data, where all of a sudden everyone has a phone. There's all these cheap sensors everywhere. And so all these big industries, you know, if, if, you look at the, if you look at the GDP, you look at like how our country runs itself, like 70% of the GDP is tied to these really old industries, things like finance, healthcare, energy, industrials, logistics, like all, all this different stuff that you don't really kind of experience day to day as a young person. It affects you, but you don't really engage in it. But that's what runs our world. And all these industries that run our world, suddenly there's like all these better ways they could be running. Like they, all of a sudden they have a lot, lot more data but the way that they're running themselves is by these, like, these old 60-year-olds like, who have no idea how to do technology like you guys, and they're not using the data. They're doing a really bad job. And so the thing you kind of learn when you step out into the world and like, see most industries is they're like, all just completely broken compared to how they should be running. It's actually very shocking how bad it is. Um, so, 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 so basically like, taking like, modern technology ability, being able to do basic IT stuff to use data, um, is, is, is actually like, there's like, a big gap between here's, here's where the industry is and here's where it could be if you have like, a smart person running it. 
And so that, that's like a really interesting opening in the world right now is that all these things are just so broken. And so like, it, it's actually, it, it's hard to quantify these things, but I think the last time there was this like big gap like that where it's like not being, being done the way it should was almost like the late 19th century. Because in the late 19th century, as you guys know, we had the second industrial revolution. So you had all these big scientific advances. You created refrigeration, you had you know, mass transportation, and you had like, the whole economy got totally changed, right? So back then you used to have like all these small family farms and small manufacturers, but suddenly because you had refrigeration and canning and all this stuff, like everything got rewritten, all the small things got destroyed. You, you kind of remapped how the economy should work based on new technology. And that's like really similar to what's happening now in, in a different way, where we're remapping how all these big industries work thanks to new technology. And so it, it, tur it, turned out with, uh, it turned out with Palantir, even though we started by trying to solve all these intelligence and defense problems and help catch the bad guys and build systems, a lot of the data systems we were building were applicable to a lot of other industries. So we started to go into finance, into healthcare, and energy. And so now most of Palantir's business is with the Fortune 500 companies, like doing things in those areas. But it's not just Palantir that's doing this. There's a whole new wave of companies starting in Silicon Valley that are, that are really interesting right now because they're all going in and fixing these industries. And the kind, of, the kind of role that leaves for individuals is the world really needs leaders right now because it's one thing to say that there's a gap and here's how it obviously should work, but it's really, really hard to be the kind of like, group or person that steps in and somehow like, is a leader that like, actually brings that reality to fruition. Like, like, it, it, these things don't just happen naturally. Like, the future maybe should exist this way, but you don't just get the future automatically. You have to build the future. And so there's, it, because this is the time in history where there's this big gap, it's also time in history where being a leader and being someone who can like, take, take a vision in industry and push it forward is really valuable. So I think the next 20 years or so, you're going to have like, huge amounts of value created in Silicon Valley based on this. And, and people already kind of know this around the world. Like one thing that's very different, I do a lot of business between here and Asia because Asia is also the fastest growing economy in the world right now. And if you like, talk to the top people in Asia, the top families, they always used to want their kids to go to Harvard. Now they all want their kids to go to Stanford because they know this is, like, this, this is the area where, where it's happening, right? And so, and this is true of all these big industries. Like we have like the CEO, CIOs of all these giant oil companies and healthcare companies, finance companies calling us all the time, trying to meet here. After I did Palantir, I, I raised a $450 million fund. So I'm investing in a lot of these companies right now. And uh, there's, there's only a few of us. There's, there's three new funds in the Valley that are pretty big. You guys probably know it's Shamoth, it's called Social Plus Capital. It's Mark Andreessen, which is Andreessen Horowitz. And then mine is Formation 8. Those are the three kind of bigger ones that have been started in the last six or seven years. And then of course, there's a bunch of great ones that have been around forever. And, and all of us who are doing these funds and who are building these things, we're getting contacted by like all the people who run big industries. So it's, it's, so it's very interesting. And, and then there's a question like, how do you, how do you become a leader in this new economy? Like, what do you, what do you have to do? What do you have to build to, to get there? What kind of skills do you need? I think it's quite a few things. I think when I was in high school, I thought it was all about just being really good at computer science or electrical engineering and like figuring out some really new hard technical thing and that was what's gonna make me rich and it's what's gonna make us really successful. And I think that's a really good thing to work on in high school. You do have to learn the basics, but actually there's a lot more things that are really important. I got, when I was in high school, I'd be way too scared to be up here talking to you. And fortunately, I learned a little bit about communication over the years. But I think, I think communication is really important. You have to be able to talk to people. You have to learn how to inspire people. I think you have to learn how to be very interested in business, in, in, in a certain in, in industries and how they work. So basically, not, not just business as, as a whole, but like you have to like say, I really want to learn about how this energy industry works, or I really want to learn about how this part of healthcare works. And if you're not passionate about it, you're not going to be successful in building something. And it's fine. Like, vast majority of people aren't leaders. They're just going to follow. They're going to go into an industry. But if you want to be a leader, you want to be the person who changes it, you have to learn these industries as well as learning the computer science skills. And then when you, and when you learn them, you have to be able to then inspire others about, about you know, what the vision should be. One thing I thought was really interesting this week, actually, there's a guy visiting town named Magnus Carlson. He's this 23-year-old who just won the World Chess Championship. And uh, he, we brought him by a couple of my companies. It was really fun. And he played simuls. He, he beat me pretty badly. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, actually, one of, the, one of the young ladies in one of my companies tied him, which was really impressive. So it was pretty cool. We got four and a half out of, out of five, uh, or, what, or half out of five. But, uh, but anyway, the thing he was saying that I thought was really relevant to this is when he does his chess homework, he studies like anywhere from a few hours to eight or nine hours a day. And he only studies things he's passionate about. And his teachers would like give him, here's your homework. Here's what you should be doing. And, he, and if he didn't like it, he would just do other homework instead in chess. So you just ignore the stuff that he wasn't passionate about because like, you only really do well in the world if you find something you really love and you're really passionate about and study it and learn it. And you can't really quite do that in high school, I, I realize, like, unfortunately. But it's, it's kind of funny. High school kind of trains you the opposite of how you should be. Because, and it, and it, it is all of, <laughs> yeah. It's not unfortunate. <laughs> I think, 
I think your job in high school is to make sure you get good grades and get into a good college. So don't don't like just ignore the boring stuff because like unfortunately some some of it's exciting, some of it's boring, and that's that's life. But I think when you do get out into the real world, it's really important to mostly spend your time on the things you really care about. And that's like almost a habit you're gonna have to break after after having got, gone through the system that we put everyone through. But uh, you know, in in, 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 in general, it's like there's like all this stuff going on right now that's pretty fascinating. I guess the other thing I'd say about being a leader is it's actually really, really hard to start these things. And from the outside, when you look at any of these companies you've heard about, if you, you think of it as a graph and you think it's just like always going up and to the right, and it's like, oh, it's amazing how well they're doing, that's totally not how any of these companies work. It's always like up and down and up and down. Like anything in life you're trying to do, there's like a lot of times when, when everyone thinks it's failing. And your job as a leader is to kind of have this energy inside you that, that just you believe really hard, and you kind of pour that into everyone around you. And there's times when everyone wants to quit, everyone's questioning it, and it's your job to kind of like, to, to somehow rally them and somehow believe enough that you convince them to keep going. And that, that's true for like every great company I've seen or every great mission you're on. It's always gonna go up and down. And so that's it, it really what it is, is about having the passion and the inspiration and about like helping others believe. And that's, that's something that's very tough to do especially because you, know, you, might, you might not even be right, but you, you, have to, you, just, you have to, you know, do your best to assume you're right and, and keep learning and pushing in the right direction. Um, I, guess, I guess the other thing I'd say about high school that's probably pretty important is it's a really good time to learn how to be like a good friend and learn how to be loyal to people and learn how to have, you know, have that kind of discipline to, 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 to be a good person. I think almost everyone I've seen who's successful, they learned a lot about relationships when they're younger and, and I, think, I think that's something I, you know, I thought I was just learning things in class, but actually, actually like, like learning about being with each other, being social, going out there and talking to people, it's a lot more important than just getting A's in all of your math classes, I'd say. So that's, that's something I decided I had forgotten at the time. And then, um, and then finally, I think, you know, this is a really interesting time because there's all this possibility, but it's also like, like there's also like a duty, I think, it's not really taught to us in our society that I think people should consider that we actually have here, because, you know, I, I know this is like one of the top high schools in the area, and you guys are like so smart young kids exposed to Silicon Valley. And it's actually like Silicon Valley's job to fix all these big industries. Because not only are these industries changing, but it, I don't know how much you guys pay attention to this, but if we don't change healthcare and fix it, if we don't fix the financial system, like our country is actually in a really tough spot. There's all these old people right now who we owe lots of money to that are kind of stealing from all of us who are younger. I don't know if you guys have paid attention to this. It's really annoying. We're basically like massively in debt for each of us, thanks to the older generations. And, and, and it's gonna get even worse because like everything is getting more expensive and more broken. So it's not only like really exciting that we have this opportunity right now, it's also really, really important that some of you do learn about these industries and do help fix them because it's the only way we can kind of make our country keep working as we get older. So happy to share that with you. And if anyone wants to chat about things afterwards, happy to connect. So it's nice to meet all you guys.